Now we're going to look at facial processing on Python with PyTorch. You're going to see how to find faces and images, then how to find actual face, facial features on those faces, and then we're going to also look at detecting emotion. So we're going to deal with a number of different aspects here. We've got to start first of all just with finding faces in an image, and that's where we're at right here. So this code provides all of the examples for this particular part that we're looking on here. And it begins basically just by checking to see if we're in Colab, setting the appropriate flags. I designed this primarily to work in Colab, but it should work in other environments. I frequently run it from a Mac as well. As you can see, I support MPS, CUDA, and CPU. So we need to be able to detect actual faces in an image. We're going to use additional libraries beyond what is simply available in Python PyTorch to do this sort of thing. Here we're going to look at something called FaceNet PyTorch. FaceNet PyTorch is not installed by default in Colab, so you'll need to install it just with a simple pip install. If you're running this locally, you may have to do that as well. I'll try to make sure that it's in the standard install for the class. But this goes through a number of different things, and it installs. So at this point, we're ready to actually look at an image and try to detect an actual face in it. Not facial features yet, just a face, or multiple faces. Humans sometimes do socialize together, so you, you, it's rare, but you might see more than one human in, a same, in the same image, even in this era of social media. So we load the image, and we're going to use the MTCNN. This is in that that Python face net that I had you install earlier, or just now really, and you can see for this individual, who is a stable diffusion generated individual, no less, but you never have to worry about getting consent forms from them to be, to be in your videos. But nonetheless, it does detect his face, and it places a bounding box around this. You'll see that the call is pretty simple. We're simply passing in the image, we're passing in a pill type image, so it can just go right into here. We will see that as we deal with more of these libraries, like finding facial features, unfortunately different libraries, some want it in pill form, some want it in NumPy, some want it in OpenCV, which is kind of the same as NumPy. So we're, we're going to end up dealing with more than one at once, but for now we're just dealing with, him, with the one format here, pill. And you can see that it has found his, his face. It also only found one face because it's only putting in one bounding rectangle. This is a pretty clean image. Well, it's stable diffusion generated, so it's the definition of clean. And that's all that it found. Sometimes it will find, well, sometimes it'll find false positives. Like, I don't know, maybe it'll think one of his buttons is a face. I've seen that. So you have the big face and then the others. Well. In this box's structure that is returned, there it's a collection, so there could be more than one face. They're put in order by the highest probability of it actually being a face. So if you can assume that there's just one person in here, then you can go ahead and just grab the first box. I, I use that technique frequently. But now let's detect multiple people. This is a stock art image that I pulled from Adobe. I do have rights to, to use these, so this is good. I tried to pick one, two, that had a number of, that was diverse. And not just diversity for diversity's sake, it's good to train your models on this sort of thing. So I wanted to see that it was not just dealing with one particular type of face better than others. And we run it, and here you can see that, well, you'll see in a moment that it, it does detect each of them. I don't have it actually draw boxes around these, but what we're trying to do here is I'm having it zoom in on each person's face and then expand it. This is a fairly high resolution image, so we could grab each person's face one by one and create a reasonably high resolution image of them. You can see I download it here, and I, I, I print out the bounding boxes that we have, and then I crop them. 
So I find a box and I make sure that it is box shaped and I put a box around each of them and we, we, we basically calculate the aspect ratio and crop it. I could also save these to individual files if I so desired, but here you can see each of the people's faces cropped out of the bigger image. I could actually see a use for this sort of a thing. At any rate, this is the introduction just to dealing with finding faces in images. We're gonna go a lot further than this, but this is foundational because the next thing that we'll look at, finding facial features, finding their eyes, finding their nose, things like that, We've got to first find the face and then find the actual facial features for optimal quality. Thank you for watching this video. And if this was useful, definitely give it a like. Subscribe so that you see all the other videos in this series.